live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Hello, welcome to Inside Scoop. I'm your host today. My name is Ken McMillan, and our guest today is John Horsch. He's the founder and coordinator of Social Action Living Together, which is a SALT. SALT is a grassroots organization that proposes and advocates for common sense social policy legislation for the state of Virginia. He's been advocating for, on the behalf of low-income working families and prisoners since 1983. They have had nine legislative wins in 2020 in the general, uh, Virginia General Assembly. SALT has worked on some bill, bills for 15 years. Good to see him pass, too. So welcome aboard, John. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here, and I thank you for the nice introduction. I'm, I'm just delighted. I always, like, <laughs> I always like to talk about our uh, SALT uh, adventures. <laughs> well, now, I'm glad to have you aboard. And I know that we're not on a ship, but uh, what got you started into this? Well, I um, I worked for H uh, HHS. Um, I guess it was HEW in those days, and uh, we were really fearful for our job in a new administration. And uh, so uh, morale was pretty bad. So uh, the management called in a uh, management uh, psych. The psychologist to spend a couple of days with the total hands, all hands meeting. And he told us, he said, well, you know, if the uh, uh, employer doesn't appreciate your skills and abilities, you've got two choices, either get the hell out or, uh, you know, uh, go home, uh, keep a low profile, but go home and volunteer in your community until this blows over. So I wrote Jim Scott, my uh, supervisor, a note that uh, I would like to volunteer and I, I gave him some of my uh, background. I have a master's in social work and a master's in public administration. And uh, I didn't think he even had time to get to his inbox, and I got a response that I was appointed to the uh, human uh, Fairfax County uh, Human Services uh, uh, organization. And uh, uh, the uh, chairman kept pestering me and saying, "You know so much about this. You're you're so good." Uh, my wife is the uh, chairman of the Catholic Charity, and. Um, she said, they're looking for somebody with your knowledge and, and ability on these issues. So uh, I said, no, I'm overloaded with family. And uh, uh, so uh, basically, uh, uh, I agreed to let them put my name in to be considered, and I got appointed there uh, with a huge uh, disappointment because I went there thinking, Gee, finally, I can advocate for some of the things that uh, I um, that uh, are uh, you know uh, for less fortunate people, uh, in particular low-income families. And uh, there wasn't any interest or sympathy in um, uh, in the uh, in, in on the board, Catholic Charities Board for advocacy. They, they, they for them that was not. Um, something they wanted to get into. So uh, I came back with another proposal on that and I put in some uh, forewords on my proposal from uh, Pope John Paul II saying advocacy for poor people was uh, the way to go. It was a good thing and it was uh, an expectation of uh, people who cared. And uh, the bishop just happened to drop in on that particular meeting, and he agreed. So then the board agreed. So uh, that gave me access to the social um, justice committees of the various parishes. And uh, I, uh, meeting with them, I found that um, basically they headed up social justice committees, but they were just kind of... Um, 
you know, twiddling their thumbs, not knowing what to do. Well, I knew what to do. So anyway, <laughs> I had a, a gang of eight leaders on this. Uh, and, um, and, you know, they could get a lot of people to send letters and advocate, but uh, uh, I, I was really concerned about families, uh, 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 welfare families, low-income families in particular, because my mom died when I was three, and I went into relative care, and uh, I knew how much that family uh, sacrificed to take me in, so I was very sensitive to that. And I came here from Missouri, I was pretty new, uh, but um, uh, the benefits there were uh, sub-subsistence. I mean, they were just just stingy, awful. And I thought, well, Virginia is going to be way ahead of Missouri when I got here. I think they were behind Missouri. They were so awful. So I went to a meeting and Senator Gartland was there and he... Uh, he, uh, uh, I learned at that meeting that he patroned, you know, uh, domestic violence, foster care, mental health, any, any social policy that was any good in Virginia had his name on it. He was a patron. So uh, I approached him about welfare uh, increase. I said, you know, I can't believe it. They're, they're so, I, I don't know how a family could survive. And he didn't seem to take any interest. He didn't seem to want to do it, uh, to increase. So I, I learned along with the eight that I was working with, the eight leaders from the parish, that um, parishes out there, that they have a Richmond wrap up that, uh, where all the Northern Virginia legislators come and they listen to the community and you have three minutes. So all eight of us signed up. And uh, you know, Senator um, Senator Gartland uh, looked at the list, sign up list, and he said, "I see, you know, he named each one of us." He said, "I see, there's eight people signed up here from Salt. We're going to be here all day. You go out in the lobby and you pick one person to speak." Well, we just sat there. We didn't go out in the lobby. <laughs> We all testified, all of us on a little different, you know, spin. And, uh, in those days, we were kind of foolish. We testified on eight different issues, which isn't going to work. So um, anyway, I, I uh, testified and, uh, you know, I was very intimidated. All those legislators up there staring at me when I testified. And they didn't ask any questions. And they didn't show any interest or support. I was... I was devastated and, you know, I was testifying, my knees were shaking and they could probably detect my nervousness. And I thought, you know, this uh, advocacy stuff is not working out. <laughs> so what prompted you to change your technique? Well, you know, uh, well, I must have, uh, some reason, I must have had a dental appointment or something and I walking in the house and the phone rang. And the lady's voice said to me, John, she says, you know, how do these families, uh, how did Virginia get to be so stingy? How do these families survive? I said, who is this? <laughs> and she <laughs> said, oh, I'm Dorothy McDermott. I'm your de uh, delegate. And she said, um, I heard you testify. And she says, what you might not know is that I'm the new chairman of the Appropriations Committee, and I want to do something about welfare benefits. And she said, don't tell anybody, but the, uh, the word is that the governor is going to report a, that the revenues are strong, that there's going to be a surplus, and he's going to have to come to me to uh, get authority to use that money, and I'm going to insist that he use it for these families. Well, by God, she said, you know, uh, get your people calling and uh, your, their delegates and senators and the governor and anybody will listen to you. And she got it. So we were just so elated. And we became, instead of a gang of eight, within a few days after word got out, we were a gang of 58, you know. Wow. 
swarm to want to be part of uh, salt. We call ourselves salt. So, uh, so, so you got a couple of bills bill passed last year. Uh, I see yeah. um, that you had advocated for. You want to tell us a little bit about that, those bills but, that you got passed? Well, we come to realize that in working with poor families, um, you know, that uh, people in prison, uh, that, um, you know, uh, that uh, as much as they've done wrong to uh, go to prison, uh, you know, they, they've hurt, in, in, in most instances, somebody was hurt because of what they did, you know. But most of all, the people that were hurt were the, their families. And that, uh, so the um, criminal, the uh, Justice Department uh, website reported that 75%, I believe, 70 or 75% of the families have children. Uh, prisoners have children, and uh, so uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> we learn that uh, uh, that uh, when they when they get out of prison, that you know, if they go back to their families, they can't get TANF, they can't get welfare, they can't get housing, they can't get uh, food stamps. And, and so consequently, they don't go back to their families and uh, they go back to their old ways with their old buddies that got them into trouble and they go back to prison. And that's a rather costly deal for the, pa uh, for the uh, taxpayer because, you know, when they go back, that's $30,000 a year. We could send them to Harvard, you know, uh, uh, for the cost of prison. It's interesting that you brought that up because I just read an article a while back, a couple of days or weeks ago, about how much it cost for the private uh, prisons, uh, the private ownership of prisons, yeah. and how yeah. much it cost yeah. the taxpayers. What, yeah. Do you know anything about that? Yes, I should. Anyway. <laughs> I'll tell you, but yeah, let, let me uh, just say a couple of things before I uh, nail that. Okay. Be sure I nail it. But um, anyway, uh, we, uh, 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 the uh, TANF and food stamp legislation, when they, a federal level, level, when they passed it, a federal, uh, TANF is a family, but it's a block grant. So, you know, no matter whether the caseload goes up or down, they have the same amount of money they have to work with. But, um, they, they knew that the states would be very upset that, uh, the, that the prisoners, uh, when they get out, would be denied this because uh, it would impact their ability to be able to, uh, you know, be successful in their reentry, to be able to go back to their family. It would jeopardize the family reintegration. So uh, they, they put in the law that the uh, states could change the ban on food stamps and TANF. And about 30 states had eliminated or, or modified it, but uh, Virginia won. They were very stingy uh, and resistant. So we, we uh, advocated for that and um, we put in a bill to uh, end the ban. And uh, some years we got it through the Senate and it'd be killed in the House, and other years it'd be killed in the House, and not, I mean in the Senate, not the House, and other years they wouldn't, neither one would touch it. So um, last, uh, last year, well, a couple times, uh, we tried 15 years to change it. That's how resistant they were. And, and uh, but we were determined to change that. So um, anyway, uh, some of the years in order to change it, we compromised. We said after five years out of prison that they can get TANF and, and or food stamps if they need them, if it's part of their reentry. And we put all kinds of conditions if, um, you know, um, if uh, they're seeking a job or, or if they're um, uh, 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 drug tested and all this kind of thing and it still wouldn't pass. 
well, there was a new election, a blue wave, and, and we put the bill in again <laughs> for the 15th year. And by God, you know, it not only passed, it passed universally. There were no conditions and uh, there is no constraints, on, uh, you know, no exceptions. You get out of prison and uh, it's not held against you and your, your eligibility is assured just like uh, anybody else that qualifies. Now, all these years, if, if they qualified, they were denied only because they had uh, a drug record, you know, and so, um, Anyway, what was the other question you raised? Oh, the private prisons. Yeah, the cost of the taxpayers that put into that. Well, um, you know, I, I read that the cost of uh, prison, the annual cost, is two and a half times what it costs to educate a kid at our school. Imagine all the good things we could do in education if we stop locking up with so many people and uh, you know um, uh, I, I just add one thing uh, we're at St. Mark's and when they had a building going on and uh, we had to go to another we went to a, a Protestant church just to see what it was like and that particular Sunday they had a lay person give the uh, homily or service, uh, the sermon. And he turned out to have uh, been a member of the parish for a long time, Episcopal Parish. And, uh, and he just got out a couple weeks before he spoke from prison. And uh, he told how, uh, you know, he was uh, cooking the books because he did a little gambling and, and the, but with the intention of replacing it and then he replaced it and he got away with it. So he did it again and he did it. And all of a sudden it was uncovered and discovered and he went to prison for a long time. And he uh, spoke about how hurtful it was to the employer, to his family, his kids. And, uh, you know, how uh, remorseful he was and, uh, you know, how it impacted now his inability to get a job because he had a record and all this. So anyway, uh, it um, really made quite an impression uh, on us that we need to be more involved in, uh, in uh, prison issues. Uh, uh, because it does affect families and our concern, our first concern was about families. Um, another now, issue that we spent, well, I guess I mentioned this on the TANF increase. Uh, after Dorothy McDermott increased, it took another 15 years to get another increase. So you can imagine with inflation over 15 years, how, how much value the, their uh, stingy little benefits lose. So. Um, I uh, went in to see Vince Callahan, who was the uh, new uh, uh, appropriation chairman. He says, I'll do it, and he got it done. So a lot of other organizations worked on it with us over the years, and we couldn't get anywhere. But he was new uh, appropriations chairman, and so, you know, uh, persistence pays. So I get that. Um, you do a lot of advocacy for something else. Uh, I think it have, has something to do with uh, gun violence. Uh, isn't that how I met you? Yes, at the uh, at the uh, the demonstrations out in front of the NRA. Yes, um, we uh, we're you know we're very supportive of uh, gun violence legislation. We talk to our legislators about it. And uh, I'd like to get back to the uh, private uh, private prison. Uh, we we discovered that um, uh, that uh, there's uh, only one private prison in in the prison system in Virginia, and that's at Lawrenceville, and it's a mess. Um, we keep getting complaints out of there about uh, the, the 
people being thrown into solitary confinement and not for <clears throat> no reason. Uh, they don't have enough guards. Uh, the uh, the guards are paid about eleven thousand less. So uh, we got a um, bill put in. We work with Adam Eben, Senator Eben, to put in a bill to uh, uh, eliminate the uh, operation and um, uh, management of private prisons. Uh, their contract runs out in, in, in three years. Well, it was defeated and we found out right afterward that, um, that the, uh, the uh, GEO, who is the contractor, their top, uh, uh, their top lobbyist that uh, got it defeated was uh, uh, an advisor to a political party. <laughs> A, a huge conflict of interest, and as soon as we fingered Does that, that surprise you? <laughs> yeah. As soon as we got the word out on that, he resigned. So we came back with another bill the next year. Yeah, well, this year was the second year, our second attempt, and um, we, we learned that GEO uh, gave every member of the committee uh, that was going to hear the bill uh, a, a, a political uh, donation. So, uh, whoa, so it so, went, down, uh, went down again this year, but we're going to be back. Uh, if we could uh, sustain our effort 15 years on, uh, to get the success, uh, we'll, we'll do that here. We'll, 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 we're going to hold steady. And uh, so, so uh, hold on a second. So, you're telling me that this company, this private uh, company that houses prisoners uh, are the ones who who are actually funding the campaign for donations for um, for the, uh, sorry about that, yeah, for, the, for, the, for the people who decide and determine who's going to get uh, whatever in, in, in the legislative yeah. system. Yeah, just, just, go, just go to VPAP and you'll see how much each one got and, and uh, how Whoa. much. Yeah. So um, I'm yeah. hoping my audience understands and knows that so that they can rush to this. What is it called again? VCAP? V VPAP. I think v it's VPAP. V -A -P. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, a website. Website. That's they, shocking. They track political, uh, political uh, donations. And I, I can't quite remember. Virginia V. I, I can't quite remember. We, we will be able to look that up later. So he, here's the, the point that I want to make on that specific point uh, uh, issue there. So you're telling me that the private industry that controls and, and funds or do, does anything with our prison are actually paying their way to get what they want so that members of legislative body cannot or do not to go the way they should be going, which is yeah. saving the taxpayer money. Yeah, yeah. The so it's it's, it's a profit in keeping people in jail as opposed to getting them out of jail and back into being a, a yeah. member of the community. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the problem is we've identified people in the prison there that don't get medical care and they've had very serious, um, very uh, medical uh, issues. Um, uh, they don't have enough uh, guards, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, it, it's dangerous because they don't have enough guards, and, and they, the guards aren't don't get the training. They don't meet the standards. In fact, we have learned that the Department of Corrections has fined the contractor every month for I don't know a long time. I think thirty-five thousand dollars a month, because <clears throat> they're violating the terms of their contract. But yet, the contract is not being terminated because of their political influence. So that's what we're going. Okay. To. Before we get ready to break, I I want to ask you this question, um, real quickly. Um, 
What do you think about uh, the death penalty, which is on the table now, if it hasn't been abolished yet? I haven't kept up with the General well, Assembly. Uh, I, I, we're strongly opposed to the uh, death penalty, and we've been very active on that, very supportive. We've sent out, you know, uh, I mentioned that we were a gang of eight. And over the years, every time we've had a success, our membership has skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. We have 1,300 now. And uh, anybody that's listening today, if they want, you know, just get on the website and, and indicate your interest in working with us. But uh, yeah. basically, um, where was I headed with that? Um, what was your question? <laughs> the question was, what did you think about it real quickly? Oh, oh uh, yes. We, about the death penalty, the abolishment or should it continue? Uh, we're, we're very opposed to the death penalty, and we're in colo uh, a coalition with the um, uh, uh, Virginians uh, uh, for alternatives to the death penalty, VADP. I got uh, you. Great organization, and uh, oh yeah, what, what the reason I focused in on the, our membership number is we send out alerts to all our members now, and we've send out we've tracked the uh, death penalty penalty legislation, and we've sent out alerts to our thirteen hundred members, and we know how many of them send uh, messages to their. Uh, uh, to their legislators or to the committee members. And, you know, they've been peppering the committee with 90 messages to uh, end the uh, death penalty, you know, to each, okay. each legislator. And uh, for your information, uh, one version has passed the Senate uh, by a good friend of ours patroning it, uh, uh, Senator Stanley, who is a Republican, incidentally. And uh, uh, another version has passed the House, so they're going to have to compromise. But the the versions are almost identical. There's there's no reason that uh, in conference uh, they can't be worked out. So it looks okay. like, and I so, think something like thirty states have eliminated the the death penalty. So it's about time Virginia do the same. So we're going to take a break right now um, so our sponsors can have a little time. Um, unfortunately, we have to have our sponsors, otherwise we would not exist. So we'll see you back in about uh, three minutes or so. I work out every day. COVID won't kill I'm me. I'm 24. COVID won't kill me. I have antibodies. COVID won't kill it's me. It's been a long week. COVID won't kill me. I'm 25. COVID won't kill me. I'm partying outside. COVID won't kill me. I don't me. need to wear a mask around my friends. COVID won't kill I'm me. I'm 23. COVID won't kill me. If I haven't gotten it yet, COVID won't kill me. I'm young. COVID won't kill me. Famous last words. Don't let them be yours. Socially distance. Mask up, America. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. fight against coronavirus isn't over. Let's wear face masks in public. Stay six feet or more from others. Follow state and local guidelines and wash our hands frequently. Let's move forward together. Learn more at coronavirus.gov. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back to Inside Scoop. My name is Ken and I'm your host for today. And our guest for today is John Horsch. John, are you there? I certainly am. Glad to be here. <laughs> okay. So, what can you tell us about your advocacy and what our viewers can do to help you for 2021 session? Well, we're very excited. Uh, the uh, session is uh, like a roller coaster, and it's going. Uh, amazingly fast because the Republicans were able to shorten the, the, 
fix the rules to uh, shorten the session from 46 days to uh, 30. And that means you don't have much time to pass legislation. Uh, doesn't get the consideration. And, um, you know, uh, it's been frustrating because it means that uh, sometimes a bill comes up. You know, usually we had a week before to uh, know that it was coming up on the uh, and to alert our uh, advocates and, and to line up te uh, people to testify. Now sometimes it can come up the day before, it can be on the uh, docket the next day, um, and it's hard to monitor and uh, the um, it, it's virtual so you can't be there and, and you know talk to your uh, patron before and go in with him and he call on you to testify. Uh, uh, and in fact, when you try to sign up virtually to uh, testify, they say they've already reached the uh, limit of the number of people allowed to testify. And then you have to uh, submit your comments in writing, uh, you know, um, written. So let me ask you something. You know, so I don't want to break hard. your continuity, but it's been very, it's been very hard. Yes. Do, do you think that that is a strategy of the Republican oh, side? Oh, well, <clears throat> they, they've got their point. Um, uh, it's a political year. There's an election in November. And the other thing is um, that uh, we had the 2020 session and the, and the uh, governor called for a special session of 10 days. Well, what, what did it go, 60 days or 70 days? And, and so everybody's exhausted and they passed so many things. Uh, and even the House and the Senate, even on, on bills that they agreed on, got into spats and, and uh, it, it was a, a uh, long, hard, uh, and and everybody thinks, you know, uh, that they uh, passed an avalanche of bills, uh, most mostly prison and and criminal justice, uh, and uh, so um, the feeling is that uh, we've been there, we've done that, and and uh, you know. Uh, the, the second year um, session is to uh, tinker, you know, the bill was passed in, in 2020, a two-year budget. So the second year is going to be just to tinker with the budget if they need to make some, you know, adjustments in the budget because of the uh, revenues or because the uh, the money wasn't uh, as much money as they uh, passed wasn't needed, you know, to make uh, adjustments like that. And the Republican says, well, we, only, we, we don't need 46 days to do that. And I, I don't know how it is that they got a majority. Oh, I guess they had to have like a two thirds majority or something to uh, keep it at 46. And, and the Democrats were unable to come up with enough votes. So it was down to 30. But I heard just yesterday or Friday that the governor is going to, uh, the, at the end of 30 days, he's going to extend it as another special session. So they're going to be able to move the uh, bills that we've been breaking our neck to, uh, uh, you know, uh, advocate for because they move so fast. I had the privatized prison bill killed the second day of the session. I mean, that's unheard of, you know. So what, what, what's on the table now? And uh, what, um, well, what's on the table now? And what can yeah, we do? What's on the table as far as uh, assault is concerned is a couple things. Um, you know, the pandemic, uh, uh, families can't in person visit the uh, prisoners. So uh, we're backing, uh, and we've put in a, a bill, um, the, uh, I'm looking here, uh, oh, uh, uh, the prison family video visitation budget, uh, bill. Uh, we've learned that there's a, um, 
a ragtag organization called Assisting Families of Inmates. And they have uh, centers where they have um, the ability for the families to come and have uh, video visitations with their uh, family members in prison. But uh, it's only sponsored by a few uh, donations of a few individuals and a few small grants from a few churches and the churches give a little space for the center and finally they you know, have to charge a little rent for it and stuff. And it doesn't even begin to, it's like a thimble in the ocean as far as meeting the need. So we put in a budget amendment to fund that, uh, to expand it, to put up a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a quality center in one prison that can be duplicated in the others and, and this kind of thing. So I, I really, budget amendments are handled a little different than other bills. And so um, we really don't know what's happening to that. They're supposed to announce their uh, budget amendments yesterday or today. And a lot of times it takes a while to sort through to see what happens. So um, anyway, we're hopeful about that. It's the first year we've come up with that. And uh, we've done a good job of preparing um, fact sheets and briefing our uh, Kay Corey has put it in and on the House and, and uh, Adam Eben on the Senate. So uh, uh, if if it doesn't get passed this year, be assured it'll be back uh, in the 2022 session. Now the other really big one that we're working on is uh, Virginia. Um, uh, we're in coalition with the Virginia Coalition on Solitary Confinement. Now we're in a coalition with about 12 organizations to end solitary confinement in Virginia. Uh, Virginia keeps too many people uh, in solitary confinement uh, and uh, in its prisons and jails and solitary confinement jeopardizes public safety. It wastes taxpayer dollars. It's very expensive and it can cause serious lifelong psychological problems for the prisoners of trauma. And Virginia needs to stop this uh, the use of solitary confinement unless it's absolutely necessary for a medical reason or uh, uh, lockdown or something, but um, basically uh, uh, DOC was uh, denying that they do solitary confinement and that's because they renamed it uh, as um, isolated housing or something. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, yeah. hold up, hold up. So, so you're telling me Yes, and sir. our viewers, yep, that right. instead of calling it solitary, uh, confinement, solitary confinement, they call it isolation? Uh, isolation housing or something like that, yeah. <laughs> but that's virtually the same thing. <laughs> I think the same thing, but that way they can deny they do it. So let me just say, say this. Um, they denied it, so... And the, and the uh, legislature listened to them because <clears throat> I guess they said also um, it was a bill SB, HB 1284 that it would cost too much. So uh, what, uh, so they got it killed in subcommittee. Uh, so we came back the next year with a bill to where they had to, uh, a bill, a law that where they had to, we defined it and they had to produce a report to the governor and to all the legislators and to us on how many times they use whatever it's called, it can be called any name, that where they isolate people uh, for uh, 20 hours or more. And it turned out that the report showed that they uh, had used it 7,122 times. And about 26% of those was over 15 days. And uh, 
uh, the, the, you know, the United Nations and the prison standard boards and everything say over 15 days is torture. And uh, then uh, another 26% were, um, or 50% were way, way over 26 days. Uh, so um, uh, we were supposed to go down uh, with a couple legislators uh, to visit Red Onion where they use the solitary confinement and they let the legislators go at the last minute, but they dropped us off. So I asked Patrick Oak what he found out and he said he found one person in solitary confinement for 13 years, 14 what? years. What? Yeah. The, Are you serious? They had no. No, uh, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, let, yeah, yeah. So you're That's in solitary right. confinement for over 14 years. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Is this someone who is on death row or not death row, so to speak? But no, not necessarily. You don't have 7,000 people on de the death row. I mean, you know, I, I just. So what would cost it? They're not all in that long, but the. It's, the point is, it's overuse. You know, it's what used. would constitute you, a prisoner, being in solitary confinement for even ten years or more? No, and there, no or even fifteen days or more. You know. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I want people to really get to, 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 to grow on this, to understand this. So, so you're not in prison for life. You're actually in prison for a certain amount of time, and yet, let's say you get 20 years of your sentence, and you're actually in prison in solitary confinement for two thirds of that time. What would justify the means for that? I mean, what could you possibly be doing in prison that would justify being in solitary well, confinement? That's the problem. They don't have. They, you know, they they what we're hearing is a prisoner asked for a grievance form against a guard, uh, and uh, the next thing you know, he won't get a, a, a grievance form. He'll be in in solitary confinement. So, so this is punishment for asking for something that your your civil rights should be accorded to you. You're being punished for just asking the question or throwing up a, a claim. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. Are you yeah. serious? Oh, absolutely. So, so uh, let me, before you move on, before you move on, let me, let me bring up another question into that. So you're not in prison for life. You've been in solitary confinement for 10 years or more. What possible behavior can you expect of this person once they get out of jail? Wouldn't that be that they're going to do something that, I mean, how would that person know how to deal with society after being in solitary confinement for 10 years or more for, like you said, even 15 days? Well, that's, that's why we want to limit it because we found out in the report also that I think about 160 last year went directly from solitary confinement into the community. And you can imagine they can go out into the community um, with uh, mental issues that were caused by their being in solitary confinement and with anger and hostility. And they're going to come back to your, you know, to their today, yesterday, today's prisoner is tomorrow's neighbor because they're going to get out event. 90% of them get out eventually. So uh, anyway, we're trying to come uh since uh, we were successful uh, in getting the reporting, and now they can't deny they do it, and and uh, and the uh, uh, need to limit it um, is uh, uh, apparent to everybody. Uh, uh, we're putting in a uh, we put in another bill to limit it, except when it's absolutely necessary to eliminate it except when it's absolutely necessary uh, and um, uh, that that reason has to be really really horrendous and serious and uh, they're um, killing that by putting in 
a budget a cost estimate, which is like $41 million. Now we have information from about 10 states that have discontinued solitary confinement and they're reporting huge savings, like millions of dollars. So uh, we're uh, uh, fighting that. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, since they killed it with their cost estimates last year, we were able to get a bill through to set up a um, standards board of, um, you know, uh, organ uh, standard setting organizations and some of the top uh, legislators and criminal uh, justice people to be on a board to set standards. Um, so we don't know, that board has met once, but um, you know, uh, we're pushing on all fronts, but this year we also have a bill in to uh, limit solitary confinement. And um, it, it just passed the Senate, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Senator, uh, Morrissey got it through and, and went over to the House. So um, but we're afraid it's going to be defeated because of their inflated 41. You know, we, the senators got them to set a more reasonable budget cost, but uh, I, I, we don't know if it's going to be enough to get it through or not. So um, anyway, we're going to keep fighting until we do get it through. But the fact is we're making headways with the legislators and educating them that uh, solitary confinement is twice as expensive as somebody who is just in the uh, general population. And the states that have ended it said the prisoners in solitary confinement went back to the general population and they adapted beautifully. There was no problem. There were very few problems and that they uh, report all these, like um, <clears throat> I think even Mississippi discontinued it and said they saved $11 million by ending it. It's, it's very costly because they have to monitor them to commit suicide. You know, they're in solitary confinement. They go crazy. You know, they try to commit su suicide. They cut their, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, their wrists and, and, and uh, they have no contact for tw 20 hours with, with anybody. They even put the food through a slot in the door so that they don't have any and there's no uh, lights are on real bright all night and there's no uh, window where they never see uh, out the sky or outside. I mean, it, it's it's inhumane. It's horrible. horrible. You know, John, I, I hate to break in here, but uh, I changed my major from civil engineering to psychology back okay. back in the 70s. And from a psychological viewpoint, that's disgusting. Yeah, that's that that to me. And, and, and I, while I know that you're saying that they use this and they're making money off of this. But to know that you're doing this to people who are actually going to be reinserted into society, you're you're really asking for you. There's no way possible you can keep the recidivism down. These are people who are going to come out as broken more broken than they were when they went in and we're the root cause of this and i'm just ashamed that this is where where we come to as a society yeah um wow i'm glad that you're letting me and, and our viewers know that this well, is going uh, on i had no uh, idea just a few days ago um the uh there was a lawsuit against uh, somebody who has been in for 600 days and he's awarded uh I think $115,000, um, the, the, the ACLU won the lawsuit and they won another lawsuit just before that for a guy that was in 13, 13 years and he uh, spoke Spanish and he was, um, uh, they they never had any translation or, or uh, you know, any uh, help to, uh, 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 they, they just kept him there because he didn't meet the requirements for a step-down program where they have to set some goals. And if they 
make the goals and their time is reduced, which is a good thing. It's a good program they put in and it has reduced the use of, from the year before report, the second year report, solitary confinement use is down, not enough. It's down, you know, 600 or a thousand times, but you know, when it's used to Pero el persona no hablo inglés, entonces, how, how in the world do they expect him to communicate? I mean, <laughs> if you don't have a translator there, yeah. oh, Lord. Well, that, that's uh, ACL1, that, that uh, case, too. So, uh, you know, prog it's like chipping away. Progress is being made. But um, I, uh, I think... Um, you know, we're getting more legislators that are standing with us. And I, you know, it was that way with the death penalty. They, they, they were just, you know, it was just no way. But uh, after years of effort, slowly, one legislator at a time, you know. Uh, so, John, let me ask you this. This is where we're going to put out the proper information for our viewers to help you and others in the state of Virginia to get what needs to be done. What would be the best way, game plan for advocacy to take a huge step into facilitating mankind moving forward? Well, go to our website and um, we have uh, our um, priorities. Um, just click on legislative uh, Virginia legislation and it'll take you to 2021, and there is a, a fact sheet on uh, solitary confinement. I think it's um, uh, priority number eight, and uh, and then um, uh, the priority is outlined in detail, so you'll learn everything you need to know about uh, solitary confinement, but then there's fact sheets about how other uh, states have benefited from the reduction or elimination and uh, really, really good information, everything you ever need. And then be sure to share that with your legislator, your own representative and, and uh, senator and, and delegate. And, and, uh, do you all do training at SALT? Do you all do training for, for viewers uh, to, to help facilitate uh, uh, the pros and cons yeah, of advocacy, we've had fall, uh, best practices, so to speak. Have, yeah, we've had fall conferences where we um, where we uh, roll out our, our uh, priorities. And then, you know, what has made really helped us is then uh, after the session, we've had Richmond wrap-ups where the legislators were invited and we got as many as 18 legislators, always about 10. And they had to talk to us about what they did about those priorities and what problems they encountered and, uh, and uh, you know, what they tried to do and what they were, and they got to stand up in front of a hundred people and crow about their what they actually accomplished and this kind of thing. But with, with the new pandemic and with the new virtual situation, we're, we're more limited in our ability to do that. But uh, what I would say is, uh, in addition, going to the uh, see the priorities and, and get all the information you'll ever need, and, and share it and, and personalize it when you uh, share it with your uh, legislator and or share it with the committee members uh, when it's coming up. Uh, what <clears throat> I, you can um, contact SALT to become a member and what we do is we make it easy for you. Uh, when it's coming up in committee, we'll develop messages to educate, educate the committee members. And all you have to do is click on it and it'll go to every committee member. And so know, basically, you can personalize it. But we will, before you click on it, we'll give you all kinds of background information so you can understand why you're clicking on it and why you're giving that mis, uh, 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 message to the committee member. And you can take what, uh, 
you know, the briefing material we give you, and you can incorporate that into your message to, so that every message can be a little different so the legislator doesn't think you're just sending a canned message. But this is easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of time. You, you get the message. You know, it's coming up on Thursday in, in, in the uh, Public Safety Committee, and uh, these are the legislators that uh, you send your message. Click. And you can just so, so for our viewers, um, it is instrumental for them to get involved now. Yes. Uh, we have an election coming up uh, yeah. uh, at the at, in November. Okay. Yeah. So you want to contact your delegates, your senators, your 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 um, uh, you know people who are running for office uh, everywhere in every single county in the state of Virginia, and um, anything else you want to add to that, so that our users can can make it a little smoother transition, so they can be ready for the GA or the General Assembly for yeah. next year. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing I would suggest is when they come home from the session or you know, over the weekend. They, they have town halls, go to the town hall. And, uh, you know, um, all you have to do is go there to be educated, but you can ask about how this uh, bill is doing, where it is, what kind of support it needs, or you can make a statement asking them to support it. Uh, and uh, you, you'll meet a lot of people there. A lot of people attend those. And, uh, you know, I spoke on solitary confinement. And before I could sit down from uh, speaking on it, you know, for, uh, you know, at a town hall for Janet Howell and Ken Plum, somebody came running up to me and handed me a note. And she said, we can help you. We can help you. I'm uh, a um, on the board member of the uh, mental health uh, organization. So you make allies, and but you know, if you speak on it, they, they reflect on what you have said and they will generally say, they will commit to supporting it. Then you can ask at the next town hall, well, what have you done to get this through? You can put their feet to the fire, so. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So John, I wanna thank you so much. Oh. This has been a complete learning experience for myself, and I'm pretty sure our, our viewers have learned a great deal. Um, I'm hoping that people will be contacting you uh, to facilitate us going forward. Uh, some of the things that you mentioned here are, huh, it's almost like being back in the caveman days. Yeah. So um, that's it for Inside Scoop. I'll wrap up once again, make sure you contact John Horsch uh, member of SALT, uh, you can see their uh, website, uh, SALT, uh, www.salt.org. Um, and be, be uh, sure to hyphenate the SALT. I couldn't get SALT, so I had to settle for a, a hyphenate. Okay. <laughs> well, that's because people were peppering it. <laughs> so, yes, I'm sorry www.s-a-l-t.org. You got it. Thank you, John. You have a nice evening. And to our viewers, have a great day.